Welcome to the Pennsylvania Association for College Admission Counseling Virtual College Fair. Thank you for joining us. A few announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. Your camera and microphone are off so the panelists cannot see or hear you. Uh, the presentation is being recorded and will be available within about a week at strivescan.com slash Pennsylvania. And now I'd like to turn things over to our presenters. And first up is Mount Aloysius College. Well, thank you. Uh, my name is Brennan Hurd. I am a freshman admissions counselor at Mount Aloysius College. And I will be sharing my screen here and you know a little bit about Mount Aloysius. I can figure this out. <laughs> so Mount Aloysius College uh, was founded by the Religious Sisters of Mercy back in 1853. And gradually, as time went on, we started off as an all-female junior college. And now we've evolved to the point where we offer both um, bachelor's and associate's degrees and also have two master's programs. Uh, and we have a mission in the spirit of the Sisters of Mercy to serve all of our students. We are located in Crescent, Pennsylvania, which is just a little bit outside of Altoona, about an hour and a half from Pittsburgh. Um, basically anything you could ever need, you can find within 20 minutes of Crescent. Uh, we have a shopping mall, airports, uh, multiple state parks, uh, hunting, fishing, hiking. So anything that you would need at school, um, you can find relatively easily uh, in just a short drive away. We do allow freshmen to have cars on campus, and we really do encourage you to explore. Uh, we do have some new athletic programs. Uh, our main freshman dorm, Imsen Hall, is under a $15 million renovation project. It is suite style, and um, we are installing air conditioning for all those rooms. We also have some options for online courses and we really try to keep our courses as relevant as possible uh, based on industry trends to make sure that we offer programs that can help you evolve not only as a college student but when you do enter the workforce. Academically, uh, we are very proud. We, our job placement rate varies between 97 and 99%. Uh, all of our professors are um, industry, uh, they have uh, worked in the industry before, they have the highest degree possible in their field, and they do still have connections. That average class size you see there are 14. You'll get to know these professors on name-to-name -name basis. If you see them outside of school, they'll know you, you'll know them. And at the end of the day, when you get out of here with your degree, you're not just getting out with a degree, you're getting out with some references from professors who really know you. Uh, admission wise, we uh, do have a rolling admission process so you can apply at any time and you can always apply on our website for free. I will put a link in the chat for that. Um, we are test optional for most programs. So if you don't take an SAT or an ACT, uh, that will not bar you from getting into the school. And then financial aid wise, we are one of the best values for a private school in the state of Pennsylvania. In terms of financial aid, we do have two full tuition scholarships available for any valedictorians or salutatorians. We also have a Mercy Presidential Scholarship, which is our top scholarship of $16,000 a year. Um, that requires an interview and an essay. Uh, we handed it out to over 60 students this past year and uh, they became Mercy Presidential Scholars. We also offer a $2,000 a year scholarship for students who have come from a Catholic or Christian high school. Um, and then we have different activities around campus. Vox Nova, which is our choir group, theater, uh, Bell Tower, which is our student newspaper, all come equipped with scholarships as well. Uh, and then we offer residence hall grants and scholarships based on merit um, due to your high school grades. So 98% of our students receive financial aid and our annual package is about $12,000 on average. We recently formed a partnership with the UPMC hospital system uh, due to the shortage of nurses right now. Uh, students from Pennsylvania 
uh, will receive all of them, the Future Hero Nursing Scholarship, which is $12,000 a year while you're taking the nursing coursework. And if you come into the college out of high school uh, with a 3.5 GPA or better, or with over a 3.0 as a transfer, you're eligible for their loan forgiveness program. They will give you $15,000 in loans and a three-year contract to work for one of their hospitals. Once those three years of work have been completed, then that $15,000 is completely refundable. And then they're also offering a $10,000 sign-on bonus and $5,000 in tuition reimbursement for those who receive that. Uh, so essentially you're going to college for little to nothing if you are a nursing student from Pennsylvania and are selected. And on top of that, you're still elig eligible for federal and state grants on top of other scholarships and loans that are being made available by the government. And then in terms of student life, uh, we always have, we, we always like to try to keep activities going on on campus. We have a student body hovering around a thousand, but it's very diverse. We have students come to us from 25 different countries and six continents. We have over a hundred clubs and activities on campus. And if you don't see what you like, then we will uh, absolutely accommodate to allow you to start a club. So if you have any questions, I'll put our contact information and a link to apply in the uh, chat bar. And thank you so much. Excellent. Thank you very much. Uh, next up is Pennsylvania College of Health Science. Thank you very much. My name is Kelly Frey. I am the admissions counselor with Pennsylvania College of Health Sciences in the category of nursing, all the way up to the doctorate of nursing practice. And as soon as I can get my screen share presentation up, I will get started here. So Pennsylvania College of Health Sciences has been around for well over 100 years, always with the same mission in mind to educate for the excellence in healthcare practice with the acquisition of knowledge. We actually were founded by one of the local hospitals to us, and we've grown to be owned by Pennsylvania uh, Penn Medicine, which is a huge health network entity in our area. We are still located in downtown Lancaster, which is a great mix of both urban and rural. We're only an hour and a half away from Philadelphia and Baltimore, and we're still within a great commuting, well, not commuting, but a great distance to DC and New York City. I know I travel there all the time. Uh, while we do not offer campus housing at this time as a commuter campus, we do um, have affiliations with local housing communities that truly help us in housing our students who wish to come from far and wide. So what are the reasons why students like to come from far and wide here? Um, it's really because we also offer that small class sizes of 17 to one non-clinical student faculty to student ratio, and then eight to one student to faculty ratio in the clinical setting, and that's always locked in place. The other reason why students choose to come here is because of our guarantees for things like clinical placement, as soon as you are enrolled at our institution, your clinical is guaranteed for your program. And we also have the high, some of the highest passing NCLEX and licensure exam rates in the nation, 98% for our ASN and BSN nursing students. And even in all of our other health science programs, we're well above average at 86%. Another thing that we are highly proud of is our students continuing on into their job 92.7% of all of our students are hired within the field that they intended to get hired in within six months or less after graduation. Most of them with a guaranteed job and are going in debt free. We also are a fully accredited field um, institution. Not only are we regionally accredited by Middle States Commission of Higher Education, but all of our clinical programs are also specifically accredited by their field accreditors as well, which is basically like having insurance on your degree on top of that specifically, which is really great that we offer that. We are one of the first institutions to offer our state-of-the-art learning facilities. This was a major renovation that basically turned our college campus into a mock hospital. This has been used for uh, commercial uh, videography as well as for doctors and 
other healthcare centers to actually practice and utilize our campus. All of the pictures that you have seen in our presentation today come from our campus. In fact, our rooms are often considered certified to be used for that purpose, such as our ICU room or our operating room, except we use them for student practice, even though they could be used for the real thing. We also have that affiliation with health network systems in our area, which allow our students to graduate sooner as well as get hired quicker. If you're interested in getting into our institution, we do require a 3.0 GPA for most of our programs. There are some that vary and are a little bit higher in intensity. We also require the Algebra 2 to be completed at least at the high school level or afterwards, along with two sciences with a lab. At this time, if COVID has prevented you from being able to take the SATs or ACTs, we can work around that requirement, yet we do prefer our students to have taken those tests and passed them with at least a 1,000 or 1,100 score on the SATs and a 21 composite score on the ACT. It's important to know that as a health sciences institution, all of our programs have a physical requirement. This means that you might be uh, demanded to be on your feet for eight hours a day, you might have to lift patients that could easily weigh over 100 pounds, or you may have other physical requirements that it's important to consider that you need to be capable of accomplishing in order to stay within that degree program. We also have rolling admissions on our campus, but there are some preferred deadlines that we encourage our students to abide to just because of clinical cutoffs. So for now, as a result of any student attending our event today, if you would like to apply to us for free, you can simply write down the promotional code HERO21, and I'll make sure to provide that in the chat as well after today's presentation. Then after you put in the application, which should only take about 10 minutes, you can send your, uh, your transcripts either electronically through an electronic service such as Parchment or Clearinghouse, or through email to admissions at pacollege.edu. We also do accept them by mail. Just recognize that it can take a little longer for processing. At this time, we are still accepting applicants for the fall semester, but that will be wrapping up in about a month. These are the uh, different career paths that we have available at this time for our students to consider. Um, you can always find this information on our website if you'd like to look into more. We do offer dual enrollment to high school uh, juniors and seniors, which is a great way to get a discount on any of our courses that we offer. And right now we do not have any merit-based scholarships, but we do have need-based scholarships. And many of our students who work at a local health network system, such as um, UPMC, Penn Medicine, or Wellspan, receive a great discount or tuition assistance by attending our institution. I believe that's all the time I have today. So if you have any further questions, feel free to access me in the chat. Otherwise, thank you so much. Excellent, thank you very much. Uh, next up is Point Park University. Okay, hi everyone. My name is Devin Ryman. I am a senior admissions counselor at Point Park University. I'm just gonna share my screen and then we'll get started. Okay, so Point Park University, I'm not sure how many students in here are familiar with where we are, but we're located right in the heart of downtown Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. So a little bit about Point Park. So like I said, we're right in downtown Pittsburgh and we put a strong focus on experiential learning. So we're all about that hands-on experience. Obviously we know students are coming to college because they want to get a job afterwards. So we make sure you can do everything possible while you are in college to help land that job. We have pathways starting from freshman year and then helping you all the way to your senior year upon graduation as well. So I always tell students we're a really unique experience for uh, our students on campus. We are right in the heart of the city. So if you're looking for that urban campus, the city life, experience, but you still want a smaller school, we're the perfect fit for you. We have 3,200 undergraduate students, 900 master's and doctoral students, so a total of a little over 4,000. It was a really great experience. You get to know your professors very well, small class sizes, average class size is about 15. Our student to faculty ratio is 13 to one. So you get to form those connections, which is super helpful when it comes to landing internships and co-ops and of course jobs after graduating. So we have five schools and that's how we break out our different academic programs. So you can see the School of Arts and Sciences, the Rowland School of Business, School of Communication, 
School of Education, and then Conservatory of Performing Arts. Definitely what we are most known for. We are a top 10 dance and theater school. But we have a total of 79 bachelor's degrees total. And I'm going to list them out in the next slide so everyone can take a look at them. We also do offer 20 graduate degree programs. So if you're thinking of continuing your education, you can definitely do that here. And then our current student population represents 49 states and 33 countries. And we have currently have 20,000 alum located all over the world. So you can see here, we have spelled out all the different majors that we offer at Point Park. I'm not going to say go through all of them, but I just want to highlight a couple that are unique to us. So as I've been saying, we're all about that hands-on experience. So under School of Arts and Sciences, we have our forensic science we, uh, major, which is they have a great opportunity to use our crime scene house on campus. And that's where you get to set up mock situations, work with faculty, and really um, apply what you're learning in the classroom to a physical world. We also are one of the few schools in the country that offers an intelligence and national security program. So if you're looking to go into the FBI or any of the federal agencies, our professors have all those connections and can help get you there. For School of Business, our most popular is definitely our Sports Arts and Entertainment Management Program. Being in Pittsburgh, you are just minutes away from so much that's happening, um, especially within these different areas. You can uh, major and, and specialize in either of those, sports, arts, or entertainment. Um, we have required internships within this program, so you can work with the Pittsburgh Pirates, the Steelers, the Penguins, or also the Cleveland Cavaliers if you're more interested in basketball for the sports end. We have plenty of museums that constantly intern our students. And then we actually have a partnership with a local entertainment venue that is an indoor outdoor concert space that has a designated classroom space just for our sports arts entertainment management students. School of Education, pretty self-explanatory there. Um, School of Communication, want to highlight that brand new this fall, we are uh, we are launching a sports communication degree. So if you are interested in sports and the broadcasting world, that is definitely going to be the perfect major for you. We have a connection with the University of Pittsburgh. Our students can work at the broadcasting studios there and help broadcast all of the uh, pit sports and some of the other D1 sports in the area. And then finally, we have our Conservatory of Performing Arts. As I mentioned before, we are a top 10 dance and theater program, definitely what we are most known for, but we offer that whole range of variety in different um, arts in which you're interested in. One of our most proud experiences that we have at Point Park is we launched our cooperative education program uh, just last year. So this is brand new. We are one of the first schools in Western Pennsylvania to offer this. This is where you can get paid full-time um, temporary employment with one of our with one of our university partners. So basically it's like an enhanced internship. You get paid entry level salary, but you can also earn up to six college credits per co-op. So it's a really great experience. Students typically do this through junior and senior year. And we did a trial run in our school of business for the last two years. 100% of those students were offered a job upon completing their co-op. So now this is open to all students, regardless of major. So you just work with our career development office to help plan those experiences. So we are still accepting applications for fall 21. Uh, we are rolling admissions. There is no deadline. You can apply on our website and also on the Common App. Uh, we are a private university, so there's no tuition difference for out-of-state or international students. Um, so I definitely encourage you to check out our website. I also want to encourage students to come and visit us on campus. We have been open. We have been having campus visits since last summer. We offer tours Monday through Friday. So you can go to our website, pointpark.edu, to check out some more and to plan that visit and get to experience everything that Pittsburgh and Point Park has to offer. Excellent. Thank you very much. Uh, next up is Virginia Commonwealth University. Thank you. Um, great to um, be here to share some information about VCU. <clears throat> My name is Beth and I'm an admissions counselor with VCU. Uh, we, we are a diverse urban research university. Um, inclusion and um, diversity and uh, student success are some of the big values that we hold uh, near and dear. And uh, we are located right in the heart of Richmond, Virginia. Um, so if you haven't been to Richmond before, it is a great mid-sized city. We're the capital of Virginia. Um, and actually the Capitol building is walking distance from campus. So students interested in, in getting some experiences um, 
political science type uh, students may, may be able to get some really nice opportunities real close to campus. Um, it's like I said, we're kind of a mid-sized city, but there's everything you would expect in a city. We have great neighborhoods, uh, festivals, there's sports, there's culture, entertainment, um, great outdoors. Um, so there's a lot very close to campus. Um, this aerial view here shows uh, the edge of our campus in the foreground and then sort of the business district in, in the background. That's only about two miles apart, uh, so it is walkable. Um, our medical school and the hospital is located sort of in the business district district area. Um, so again, there's a shuttle between the two campuses, but it is walkable as well. Um, one of the greatest parts about uh, being located in an urban area is that our students have opportunities to network and get internships and job opportunities while they're uh, still undergraduates. And in fact, uh, over half of our students do two or more internships before they graduate. Um, they may be doing these at a Fortune 500 company or a small business or a nonprofit um, or at our hospital. Uh, so there's a lot of opportunities to get that experience while you're still an undergraduate. Um, we're in a, a nice location as far as um, accessibility to uh, Washington DC, which is only about two hours away. Uh, we're also about two hours from the Blue Ridge Mountains and two hours from uh, Virginia Beach. So if you want to take a quick day trip to kind of get away from it all, um, very easy to do that. Um, but if you never leave campus, there's a lot happening uh, right on campus. Um, the fact that we're in an urban setting, uh, we have a, a very much of a campus feel when you're on campus. Uh, we have 500 clubs and organizations. We have fine and performing arts. Uh, Division I sports, as well as club teams and intramurals and a, a really cool workout facility. So you can get involved on any level as far as sports go. Uh, we do have uh, a diversity of uh, academic offerings as well, 70 different majors and 70 min uh, minors and certificate programs to choose from. Uh, so there's an opportunity to uh, do some collaborative work uh, with students and other majors, and there's also an opportunity for you to either do a dual major or a major and a minor and combine your interests. Um, we are large, and we think that's definitely a strength. Uh, we have about 24,000 undergraduates, uh, but average class size, and that's really where the small size counts, um, average class size is about 27 students, and we have a student faculty ratio of 18 to 1. So we really do a lot to try to make campus more manageable. We offer a lot of resources like uh, career services, academic advising, uh, certainly counseling. Um, we do a, a great workshop that helps students transition from high school to college. Um, so certainly there's a lot in place to make sure that you're going to be successful when you get to us. Um, now students who are um, kind of high achieving students and would like to have sort of a small liberal arts experience uh, within the larger research university uh, can apply for our honors college. It's a, a dynamic group of about a thousand different students from all different majors. And it, it's just, it's a nice um, community to be a part of on our campus. Um, and finally, uh, those students who are interested in um, medical school, we do have a guaranteed admission program. So you can apply as a senior in high school. And if you are admitted into the guaranteed admission program, you have a guaranteed spot in our medical school. Um, just to see uh, how all of our majors and minors are kind of split up, we do have a number of schools and colleges that house our majors. Uh, so everything from very hands-on majors in engineering, um, sciences and humanities in the uh, um, humanities and sciences college. Uh, we have things like forensic science, which is a very strong program. Uh, we have Homeland Security and Emergency Preparedness, which is also a, a unique program. Uh, we have uh, coursework in cybersecurity, which is very popular right now. Um, and then on, kind of on the other side of the, the spectrum, we have uh, a top ranked arts program. So our uh, visual arts program is traditionally ranked in the top five in the nation. Um, we have also strong programs in business, education, social work, government. Uh, so a lot of great offerings for our students. 
And the nice thing also is that uh, we have $335 million worth of uh, sponsored research money. So uh, students, no matter what their major is, they can get involved either uh, designing their own uh, research or working with uh, one of our uh, faculty on research. I think I went way over here, so I'm just going to kind of go to to the end. There's a, hopefully uh, you got a sense that there's a, a lot happening on campus, uh, both in the classroom and outside the classroom. And if you do have any questions at all, um, here's my contact information. Thanks for coming. Great. Thank you so much. Uh, next up is Ramapo College of New Jersey. Great. Thank you so much. And I am able to get my video working, which is awesome. It was not working earlier. Uh, so let me go ahead and share my screen. My name is Kerry. I'm an admissions counselor at Ramapo College. I am also an alum of Ramapo II. So in case you uh, are not familiar with Ramapo, we are located in, in Northern New Jersey. So uh, we're right next to New York City, only about 45 minutes away. We're located in a suburban town, but the campus in general is set off in a pretty remote location right next to the Ramapo Mountains. So in general, we have about 6,000 students on campus. We are the smallest uh, public college in New Jersey. However, we are a medium-sized school, so we're not too big and we're not too small. We have a 16 to one student to faculty ratio an average class size of about 21 students. The largest class size that you will see at Ramapo is about 35 students. So there are no lecture halls on campus. So you're never gonna be in a lecture hall with 100 students and one professor where you're not really knowing who your professor is and they don't know you. That's never gonna happen at Ramapo. So a little bit about our schools on campus. We offer a school of business, a school of contemporary arts, humanities and global studies, social science and human services, as well as theoretical and applied science. We have over 100 different majors, minors, and concentrations to choose from within those five academic schools, but our most popular programs include nursing and biology, communications and music production, psychology, social work, uh, management, accounting, as well as education. We also offer articulated programs with outside institutions. So these are joint programs. Uh, they include an art therapy program with Caldwell University, a uh, dental medicine program with Lake Erie College of Medicine, a law program with Seton Hall Law, optometry with SUNY Optometry, osteopathic medicine with LECOM, pharmacy with LECOM, pharmacy with Toro College, and physical therapy with Rutgers. So again, these are articulated programs with outside institutions, so you would need to apply to that specific program when you do apply to the college. And we are still accepting applications for fall 2021, just so you know. And then along with our undergraduate programs, we do offer multiple graduate programs as well as four plus one options. So those four plus one options allow you to obtain your bachelor's degree and your master's degree within five years. So we have a MBA, accounting, special education, uh, data science, as well as creative music technology. Those are all offered in the four plus one format. Outside of those four plus one programs, our general graduate programs include accounting, uh, business administration, creative music technology, data science, a doctor of nursing practice, educational leadership, educational technology, nursing, social work, as well as special education. So on campus, we do offer a college honors program. Those include honors courses and a senior research project. You do need to apply to that when you are applying to the college or you can apply by the end of your first semester at Ramapo. And like I said, we're only about 45 minutes from New York City. So we offer over a thousand different internship opportunities specifically in New York City. And then multiple times a year, we do have employers visit campus. Obviously right now that does occur virtually because of the pandemic, but hopefully we will be able to have them back soon. Also, we offer study and intern abroad programs, over 500 different programs in 60 different countries. Typically, those are tailored to your major. Okay, so some fun facts about living on campus. Uh, we do offer residence halls on campus. They're all suite style, so there's no communal bathrooms. Uh, so you're not sharing a bathroom with an entire floor of people, only with your suite mates. We do offer apartment complexes for upperclassmen and all of our residence halls are a close walk to our academic complex. As a first year student, you can have your car on campus and you can even pick your own roommates. So there are so many different ways to get involved. We have fraternities and sororities, over 120 different student clubs and organizations, professional honor societies, 
We have volunteer opportunities. Uh, we are division three schools. So we have 18 division, I'm sorry, division three athletic teams, as well as uh, multiple leadership programs too. So again, we are still accepting applications for fall 2021. You can use the Ramapo College application, the Common App or the Coalition App. The requirements, uh, we are test optional. So that will be for fall 2022 as well, uh, but uh, SAT and ACT scores are still required for those articulated programs that I did mention earlier. So we require your application, your high school transcript. On average, we look for about a 3.4 and a 4.0 scale. Two letters of recommendations are preferred, but only one is required. And then we do accept AP, IBHL, and dual enrollment credit. So some deadlines to be aware of, early decision that's binding, that's November 1st, early action, which is December 15th, um, that's also the deadline to be considered for merit-based scholarship. And then finally, uh, our final deadline, which is regular decision of February 1st. So a little bit about cost. Uh, as an out-of-state student, it's about $24,000 per year. We do offer a four-year freeze program, meaning that your tuition will never increase. And then we do offer automatically a $6,000 housing grant to all out-of-state students. That's every year for four years. So that brings your housing and meals to about $8,000 per year. Um, so along with that, again, like I mentioned, we offer merit-based scholarship. Just make sure you submit your application by December 15th. We offer full tuition and fees as a scholarship, as well as a Dean's Award, that's $7,500 per year. And then if you are accepted and you do enroll, we offer over 400 different scholarship opportunities from our Ramapo College Foundation to continuing students. So there's so many different ways that you can connect with us. You can connect with us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, as well as YouTube. And that's about all the time that I have today, but uh, I will include my information in the chat. Again, my name is Kari. I'm an admissions counselor. And like I said, uh, I'll include my information in the chat. And thank you so much for coming tonight. Great. Thanks very much. And finally, we have the University of New Hampshire. Thanks, Matt. Hey, everyone. My name is Evan Beals. I'm one of the assistant directors of admission here at the University of New Hampshire. Um, as you kind of navigate this college search process, and even tonight, you'll recognize that all of us talk about location. Um, at UNH, we do believe that uh, place matters and location is important. Um, so I always like to start just by acknowledging that UNH is located and I'm coming to you today uh, virtually from the traditional lands and waterways of the Abenaki, Penacook, and Wabanaki people um, before state boundaries were drawn and cities were established where we can establish our place. Um, we acknowledge and honor with the gratitude, the land and the people who have stewarded our land throughout these generations. Speaking specifically about present day and looking at our location, UNH is located in the beautiful seacoast region of New England. We're located only about 10 minutes away from the Atlantic Ocean, about 45 minutes north of Boston, about an hour south of Portland, Maine, the beautiful White Mountains of New Hampshire are only about 45 minutes to the north of us. Um, and as you can see from kind of the pictures on the sidebars there, there's a lot that goes on for our students, whether it be recreational um, on the weekends, heading down to the city of Boston or um, skiing at college night Thursdays um, up in the mountains, or even just taking a quick trip down to the beach. Um, or you can actually like utilize these places for your major. Students have internships in Boston where you hop on the Amtrak down Easter train line that is stopped right here on our campus six times per day. In about 45 minutes, you find yourself right at North Station in the city of Boston. Students find that um, being in the outdoors and programs like wildlife and conservation biology, uh, marine bio, or even a unique major like ocean engineering, um, is easily found and is a really great hands-on opportunity with our location. We're considered a medium-sized university. We have about 12,000 undergraduate students, only about 2,500 graduate students. The majority of our students come from out of state, so you're in great company coming from outside of New Hampshire and even outside of New England. Um, on campus, we have about 45, 48 states represented on campus, and our international students call about 70 different countries home. All of these numbers can seem a little bit large and out of context is always really important to bring them back down to talk about average class size and student to faculty ratio. 
Um, our average class size here at UNH is only about 20 students and our student to faculty ratio is 18 to one. So while you do have access to a tier one research institution that's conducting national and worldwide research um, and really well known in those spaces, you have really great hands-on opportunities to get to know your faculty members and other students across campus. We have over 150 different majors and programs spread across five college divisions on campus. Many of them are very self-explanatory as to kind of what types of programs exist within each college. Um, I already mentioned a couple of unique programs like our marine estuarian and freshwater biology program, um, but programs like ocean engineering, a really popular program of business administration, um, it's always just important for you to know that at UNH, you're never cookie cuttered into one specific program. About a third of our students come in undeclared. And then the rest of our students, believe it or not, about a third of those students then find a way to switch their major within the first couple semesters on campus. So um, while you might find that you think you know exactly what you want to do now, um, UNH is here to help you explore all of those curiosities and, and help find kind of the best fit that um, really it plays to your strengths and your passions. I mentioned that the University of New Hampshire is a tier one or R1 research institution. Um, we're one of only 20 schools in the country that offers all three land, sea, and space grant statuses um, from the federal government. What that means is that as an undergraduate student, you have federally funded research in all three of these areas. Um, as you can see from just the inlay photos in the back there, really strong agricultural programs. That middle photograph is actually of our um, ocean mapping center. Um, that's one of the largest of its kind in the country. And then our students actually build NASA satellite structures right here on campus in a NASA certified clean lab. Um, and they travel down to, um, to Florida to watch these satellite structures be launched into space. Um, as an undergraduate student, your signature experience in your senior year will be our undergraduate research conference. Every year, over 2,000 of our students participate um, in this nationally recognized conference that's here on campus. In these spaces, it's not a, a singular opportunity for a very small handful of students. Um, all of our students have access to world-class facilities um, and there's over 50 research centers that are located right here on our campus in Durham. Many of them that you see there are, look very scientific, um, but we also have the Child Study and Development Center um, and other social science or psychology based research uh, facilities on campus as well. In terms of kind of campus life and, and what it means to really be a wildcat and welcoming you into our community, um, UNH is a very residential traditional campus community. 96% um, of our first year students live on campus. We have division one athletic programs. And as you can probably tell, men's hockey is uh, kind of the, <laughs> the big happening thing going on, uh, on on nights and weekends on campus. Um, all of this boils down to UNH being in a very small town New England community with large scale research opportunity. Um, there's application requirements here. Um, again, like we mentioned, there will be a recording of this if you need to come back to it. Um, and I'll just wrap up here if you need to take a quick screenshot of my contact information. Um, and we're so glad that all of you have chosen to join us tonight. Excellent, thank you so much, Evan. Um, so that wraps up our presentations and we'll now move on to some Q&A before the session is over. And I invite all of our presenters to join me back on camera uh, to respond to this question. What advice would you give someone going through the college search process? And I'll ask our presenters to respond in the same order that they presented. I, I would say the best advice I could give somebody going through the college process is kind of two parts. First, make sure that you visit. Uh, you're never really going to get a feel for a culture until you visit. Seeing a website or talking to somebody can only give you so much information. So make sure you check the place out and see if you can uh, see yourself fitting in well there. And then use every resource available to you, whether it be through admissions, financial aid, or any other um, department that you might have an interest in. Uh, just use all these resources because there's going to be great people everywhere 
uh, they're going to be willing to help you out. Absolutely. I agree. Uh, not only that, but I would also say to um, ask questions. Don't be afraid of asking any questions to us, uh, even if it's something you believe that we already should have answered for you previously. We don't want you to leave with any questions or concerns. Um, it's better to continue asking those so that we can address your concerns and make sure that we are the best fit for you because as admissions counselors, it's not our job to make sure that you come to our institution. It's to make sure that we help you find the institution that's right for you. So we would rather have you ask those questions to figure out if we are the best fit for you or if you should keep looking elsewhere because ultimately we want you to be happy wherever you're going. So definitely that's another piece to take with you as you're on the search. I'd say the uh, best piece of advice because I was given this and I share it with all my students is uh, there's no shame in not knowing what you want to do. You're not exposed to everything at 17, 18 years old. Personally, I changed my major my last semester of college because I learned of new opportunities. So there's no shame in that. Really, I always tell students focus on the college experience because you'll figure out what you need to do at the right place. So when you go on the visits that's been mentioned, learn the type of school that you want, and then you can kind of focus on things a little bit later on. But don't stress too much about declaring a major. There's no shame in coming undecided or changing your major 15 times. It happens and you'll figure it out eventually. Um, I would also say don't stress out. Um, this is uh, should hopefully be an enjoyable process for you. It's probably your big, first big decision of your life. Um, so uh, take your time and just know that there's probably many places that you can be successful. Um, so much is going to be what you do once you get to college. So, um, you know, just make the most of your of your choice. And again, try to enjoy the process. Everyone has such great advice. And I think because we see it every day, uh, but definitely take your time, start early during the process. And honestly, the one of the most important know the deadlines of the schools that you are interested in, uh, because I can't even tell you how many times I have students that come to me and say, oh, I didn't know of the early action deadline and that I need to apply by this deadline in order to be considered for scholarship. And I have a 4.0 GPA and I have these high SAT scores, but I really missed out on that. So definitely know the deadlines of the schools that you are interested in. I will probably kind of summarize all of the things together. Um, I always tell students that um, college is a match to be made and not a prize to be won. Um, so as you kind of like hear all of us give you these tidbits of information, just think about um, the fact that if you find yourself in a really comfortable place in the fall after your senior year, you're more likely to do better in the classroom and engage outside of the classroom in the community and find yourself just in a really welcoming um, and comfortable place. Um, you'll have so many different kind of competing voices in your head, or even maybe not in your head, around the dinner table or in your school and things like that, that are all giving you advice as to like where everyone else thinks you should go and, and what they think you should do. Um, but there's, there is something to be said for that gut feeling that you get, um, that really just, there is like a good fit for you. Um, so I think that for me is, is just to remember that it's, it's a match to be made and not a prize to be won. Excellent. All great advice. Um, and that does bring us to the end of this session. I want to say thank you for joining us. Thank you to our presenters for your time and information that you've shared tonight. Uh, to our attendees, when you close the Zoom window, there will be a link to a quick survey. We do appreciate your feedback. Um, and again, the recording of this session and other sessions uh, from this college fair will be available um, within about a week at strivescan.com slash Pennsylvania. Thank you all so much and have a great rest of your evenings.